Howdy, Beef Lombard here, and welcome. Okay, as the title suggests on here, on making our first game, multiplayer at that, and it's multiplayer because of, yes, he's going to say it again, the simple multiplayer Steam template that I created a little over a year ago, and it allows you to have a quick and easy to build um, multiplayer game. So let's actually go to our main menu map, and we'll play standalone game. So you get an idea of what it's going to look like when you first get it. Um, and you'll have to watch the uh, the videos that I've done this evening. You see, access Steam community while playing. It shows your Steam username and avatar in upper right hand corner. And you can do single player and it will go directly into the map and you can start playing with yourself. I mean, by yourself. You hit escape, go back to the main menu or resume game. At multiplayer, you can find games, you find a lobby. If nothing comes up, hit Find Lobby. It will search for about 10 seconds, and if there's any games, they'll be listed right here. Click Join, ignore the ping. It's not going to be accurate right now anyway, but if you want to host your own game, come in here, put in whatever name you want, and then hit Make, and it will go into the map. We've slowed down our walking speed and limited our jump. We can hold down the left shift key and sprint. We have made cactuses, which we're going to make the cactus cause us damage. And we made a really crappy looking uh, building here. So this will get us going just for some cheap temporary scenery until we decide we want to add some other assets in here. But so far everything works and it is multiplayer replicated. To show that it is replicated, I'm going to hit this, I'm going to hit resume game. You see we've got a nice blur effect in the background. And we're going to go back to main menu and exit game. Come back in here and change this to 2. And new editor window. And let's hit exit game because we want to actually be on our test map. So now I'm going to do the same thing and hit play. Now, we have the client window is right here. See, there's a server over there. I'm going to hit Alt-Tab and show you that this is a server window. So the client can run over here and Sprint. Sprint works with replication, no problem. And let's go ahead and go to our server and let's Sprint. And there was much rejoicing. Yay, yay, yay. So, um, that's that. Okay, you should go back in here, change this back to 1, select a viewport, and now, how are we going to make our cactuses do damages? Well, we'll do this, and then we'll test it, make sure it works with replication, and then we'll fix it as needed. Apply the bandages as we need to, and we're also going to need a way of um, healing ourselves too, so we'll need a first aid kit. So, let's go to our Assets folder where we created our cool shit. Cactus. Okay. So, what we're going to need here is a new folder called Gadgets. Generic, but it's going to let us put our blueprints for our gadgets in here. Go to New Blueprint Class, Actor, and we're going to call this BP underscore... Cactus underscore zero one. We're going to go into it. Go back to our, our top tab here. Go to our mesh. Select our cactus zero one. Come back to here. Add component. Come down to static mesh. And our cactus is already selected. Now it's not going to be on the ground level. So let's grab that and we're going to move it up to 100 on our Z height. So that's going to put it on the ground level. We're going to go ahead and compile and save. So now if we come in here to our gadgets folder and pop a cactus into the map, it's going to be on the ground. And we're going to need to get rid of our other cactuses here because they're not going to do anything to us. So we're going to get rid of those and now we have our cactus. And I'm going to set it right here about where the other one was. So now we're good, right? Okay. We're going to do save all. 
go back to our cactus and the next thing we need I'm going to select nothing by clicking off of there add a component and we're going to do a box collision and we're going to call this instead of box we're going to call this our damage box and I'm going to move it up to 100 and then I'm going to use this transform and I'm going to scale it to here and I'm going to bring it out this way so if we bump into our cactus that's good enough we're going to take damage so let's do our damage next compost and save go to our event graph delete everything right click on our damage box we're going to add event on component begin overlap from our other actor tab we're going to do player underscore and that's going to give us our player underscore base so if our player runs into this we want to do what we want to get a reference to our health and we want to do what we want to subtract our health so let's hit the minus key for subtract and since this is a float we want to do float minus float now we can do it a couple different ways we can just manually put this in here and we'll make this cause 10 damage or we can create a new variable and we'll call this our damage amount change that over to a float compost and save and we'll make this to be 10 and we'll save one more time compile and save and now we we'll grab this and drop it on top of there and this is going to go ahead and say our damage amount and that damage amount is 10 so the next thing we want to do is drag off from as player base and set our health now we don't have a health check in here anywhere to see if we're dead or not we're not going to worry about that just yet we don't have death animations one off right now we just want to subtract our health from there and if we run into it we want to subtract some some more health so we're going to run over here and watch our health bar ooh that hurt ooh that hurt So now we're technically dead. We just cactuses uh, ourselves to death here. Um, damage amount 10. If we look at our player, um, character, blueprints, our health is under player stats at 100. Okay, so that works, but does it work with replication? Well, let's check and see. We'll burn that bridge as we need to here but let's grab our client we're going to sprint over here we're going to run into it and yes it does do damage you can see it we just keep bumping into it it keeps taking more damage so um, how can we prevent that from just steady doing damage to us we only want it to do once so we need a, a way of saying do it once Oh, there's a do once. So, okay, let's try that. So, run over here as the client, run into the cactus. It only did it once. I walk away from it, I bump into it again. Huh, and it's not doing it any more damage. We need it to reset. So what if we just said after this we reduce our, our health and let's add in a delay and let's just make it a one second delay and then we'll from completed to reset. So now we have a one second pause so if we stand next to it all right here's our client run over here we stand next to it 
If we stay next to it, it's going to keep every second. It's going to take away 10 of our health. If we walk away from it, it'll stop. We'll walk back over, hit it again, takes off 10, and then every 10 seconds it will start removing our health. So let's go over here with the server. Same thing. We stay next to it. It's going to continuously cause us damage. Unless we move away, it'll stop. And then we go back. And every second it will then cause 10 damage. So it works. And that's our cactus. Lovely. So we can actually take that and control C, control V, let's place a couple of them in the map. And let's put another one over here. Screw it, let's place another one right there. Doesn't matter. We just want to have a little bit of placement. We want things on our map just for testing. But we need now a first aid kit. And our test map, we need to go ahead and create new folder, map, stuff. And let's put all this stuff in there. And then we need another one that's going to be buildings. Even though we only have two, let's go ahead and put those two buildings in the buildings folder. And let's go ahead and foliage, because cactuses are foliage. And let's put them in the foliage folder. So now, a little bit cleaner, looks nicer, everything's good to go. We need a first aid kit. Gadgets. Hmm, how can we make that? Well, let's go back to our build map. Save selected, whatever. And we don't need you. We know that that, we're going to leave it alone. Let's go to our gadgets, and let's put in one of our cactuses. So we know we have something that will cause us damage. Now, we need to make... A way to heal our damage. So, uh, what what are, what are we gonna do here? Oh, let's make our own static mesh. And in this case, we don't even need collisions, so it's gonna be even easier. So let's go ahead and do this the easy way. We can grab a cube, and I'm gonna scale it up, and I'm gonna use my transform tools here. 0.25 seems good. Um, we want this. So we'll make this 0.25 and 0.5. Uh, now let's try 0.1. Tab 0.1. Um, actually, let's go back to doing this. We know that it works, so we'll go back to Selected Viewport. Uh, doesn't have to be perfect. You can make it as nice as you want to. I'm going to leave it like that. So I'm going to go to my Materials folder, and I'm going to select the red material and apply that. And then I'm going to Control c Control v and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm going to grab both of them, and I'm going to right-click, convert actors to static mesh. And I want to go to my assets folder, mesh folder, and we're going to do sm underscore health underscore pu. So we know it's a static mesh for our health pickup. So we can delete that, go to our mesh. Spawn that in the map. It's okay. If it's sticking in the ground, we're going to put it in a blueprint anyway. So now we have that. It doesn't matter that it has no collisions, because we don't want collisions on it. So we got a nice little plus there. 
Now, I'm going to delete it. I'm going to go into my gadgets folder. Actually, one thing I do want to do with that, I, and yeah, yes, he said doo-doo. Um, we're going to change this to 64 and save. Now I go back to our gadgets. We're going to right-click in here, do blueprint, actor, and as a BP underscore health PU, not because it stinks, but it's our pickup. Then we're going to go back to our mesh, select that, select our our health uh, blueprint again, add component, and it's going to be static mesh for our health pickup. And there we go. The next thing I want to do is click off of it and add a box. And you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to leave it as a box. And I'm just going to resize that a little bit. That's good. So when we cross th through that, it's going to do what we need it to do. And the next thing I want to add is I click off of there and click on Add Component, ROT, and it's going to be Rotating Movement. I'm going to select that, and I'm going to change it from 180 on the Z, on the rotation rate, to 100. Compile and save. Go back to our gadget folder and I'm going to add this into the map and see it's in the ground. We're going to fix that next. Zero and zero and zero. Come in here, grab this, and let's raise it up to 100. We'll do the same thing for our box collision. 100. And now, if we look at it, it's rotating in the map and it looks awesome. We can walk through it. Yay, and there was much rejoicing. Okay, on our pickup, let's go to our event graph. Let's get rid of all that junkola. We want to right click on our box collision and on component begin overlap from other actor, player underscore base, so we're going to cast to our player underscore base, which is our player character. As player character, we want to get health. Now, we're not just going to give our, our, our player health at this point. We need to see if, um, let's do a float is less than, and I'm going to go ahead and, and just for giggles, we're going to do max health, change that to a float, compile and save, max health is 100, and we're going to plug that into there. So it's going to be asking at this point, is our health less than 100, essentially? We could have just plugged in 100 and done that Got a branch node. Okay. If you don't know, you with nothing selected here, hold down the B key, left click, and it'll throw down a branch node for you. There's plenty of other shortcuts that I'm not going to show you. I may show you some of them, but that you can do to do basically, yeah, he said do do again. Uh, to do the same shit all over again. And he said shit. All right, so it's going to ask, um, is our health less than our maximum health of 100? If it is true, then we are going to do this. If it is not true, then we're not going to do anything. So if it is true, if our health is less than our maximum health, we need to then I don't necessarily have to, but I'm going to go ahead and get another reference to our health. And I'm also going to set our health. So if it is true, we are going to set our health to health plus, so it's a float plus a float. And I am going to do this as another variable, heal amount. And I am going to compost and save. We want our dealy here to do 25 healing 
but I'm going to select this eyeball right here, make that closed to this. We're going to expose on spawn or instance editable. I'll show you why in just a few moments. So we're going to set our health to our health plus heal amount. But what if that puts us over a hundred? Okay. So let's from here we can we now have our new value. If this is float greater than max health, then I'm going to go ahead and bring in another set health from our player base to max health. But we need to drag that off and we need a branch node and I'm going to connect that into here. Um, yeah. So it's going to ask is our health greater than our max health? If it is then set our health, our player's health, to that number right there. So it's going to set our player health to 100. So let's compost and save. If it's false, ugh, false, we don't give a shit. So let's test this out really quickly. Now, it's not going to be ready for what I want as the final product. So I'm going to walk into this cactus and I'm going to do a bunch of damage or I could stay next to the cactus and keep taking damage. Now I walk over this guy and it should heal me and heal me and heal me. Well that sucks, it just stays there, it doesn't do anything. Well it does do something, it heals us continuously. Alright, so on the component begin overlap it's going to cast to our player base which is going to say only if the player runs into this it's going to check our health to see if it's less than um, 100. If so, then it's going to heal us by giving us 25 health and it's going to verify that our health is no longer above 100 so if it is, it's going to set it back to there anyway. We need this to go away for good if we want to. If we want it to go away for good, we can destroy it with destroy actor. It's not going to destroy the player, it's going to destroy this. So right now I'm at full health. It shouldn't do anything. So let's actually run into the cactus. Then we run into it and it goes away. It healed us, but it went away and it went away forever. What if you don't want it to go away forever? You want it to come back. You want it to respawn. So instead of destroy actor, let's actually get a reference to our static mesh. And we are going to do this the long method here. We're going to set visibility. And we're going to connect that to there. Leave that unchecked. So we're going to set its visibility to false. That's going to make it invisible. However, it's still going to be working. It'll still keep giving us that healing effect. So we need to grab the box collision. And we need to... Ooh, um... This is not going to work in replication. Deactivate doesn't seem to want to work well with um, replication. We're going to deactivate it. Right. And I'm going to create another variable. And um, we're going to call this respawn. And we want to set this to 5. So I'm going to delay and the delay that I want is my respawn time 
Yes, I could have just entered the number in, in there, but whatever. After that point of, in time, we're going to get a reference to our static mesh again. We are going to set visibility and check that so it's true. And then we're going to get reference to our box, our box collision, and we are going to activate. This is going to work short term, but I don't think it's going to work with replication. So let's compost and save, and let's see what happens now. Come over here, walk through it, nothing happens. We take damage. Come over here, walk through it, it goes away. But let's go ahead and do a bunch of damage to herself. See, it's back already. It was only five seconds. We want to make sure that it it's not staying continuously working. And it did. Um, so let's let it do a bunch of damage to us again. Come on, come on. I can actually go in here and click on the cactus and if I had set that correctly then we could have set that to um, do more damage. In this case our heal amount we can change that to 10. Now if we hit play it's only going to do 10 damage to us. So we just want to let this continuously do damage to us to get around 50% damage. Okay, so we run through it, and it didn't disappear. It didn't disappear. Didn't disappear. Didn't disappear. Didn't disappear. Because the way that we structured this, it's set to... All this is good. And that's good. goes to the turning invisible point is all based on whether or not our healing is there. Alright, so our box I'm pretty sure deactivate's not gonna work correctly. This should also work here if it is from this point instead of this point. So what I'm going to do to make this a little bit easier on life, I'm going to create a custom event. And respawn whatever, shit. Um, clear what I'm just I don't care what it's called I, I'll name it something different later on I'm going to break that link and I'm going to grab all this stuff right here and move that into my custom event if we have to replicate things this will be a good step towards that um, at this point, we want it to go from here. So I am just going to stretch these guys out a little bit. And actually, no, we want it from here. Yep, it is getting late. That's why I'm making simple mistakes here. So we probably want to fire it from here. It's setting our health at this point. It's capping our health. So after our, our initial heal is where we want to try it here as and what do we call this? Just call it clear. So let's try 
I probably should have named it something that wasn't already <laughs> a heavily used function. So let's actually um, remove from map. Okay, we are using the right thing. So let's cause damage. And let's go ahead and grab a hold of it. It disappears. It should come back in five seconds. There we go. Used it again, went away, it'll come back in five seconds, and then we can heal up one more time, and we should be back to full. Yep, there we go. So now that we're at full, it should not go away. Alright, so that's that. It wakes. We'll save all. And I'm going to go back into my cactus. Our damage amount, let's hit this eyeball right here. Compile and save. So now, if we go back into our map and we select our cactus, we can now change the amount of damage that we do with our cactus. Let's go to our other map. Save all. Go to test map. Now, with all these cactuses that are there, go in here and play. Since they're already there and working, yeah, we can do damage, but let's go ahead and put in our first aid kit. Let's throw in gadget health pickup. And we'll throw in one here. And heck with it, we'll throw one in this building over here. So now we have health pickups and we have damage pickups. Or damage ability. We can damage ourselves and we can heal ourselves. And sprint, ooh, ouch, that hurt. The sprint, ouch, ouch, that hurt. And let's go to our, our first aid kit. Let's heal, and we're good to go. We can't just sit there and stand on top of our healing kit. It won't work by standing on top of it. It's going to disappear and deactivate the, um, the ability to do that. So it's just going to go away. So that's that. Now let's actually start cleaning up some shit. Um, and then I'm going to call it a night. It's like five or six hours of videos tonight, as it is. So let's save all. Save selected. Starter content. We're using some of it, but we don't want most of it. Architecture. We don't need that. So I'm going to delete that folder. We're not using any of that stuff, so I'm going to do it. Um, actually, before we do that, let's actually go to the Maps folder. Let's delete the Maps folder inside the Starter Content, not your other Map folder. So make sure you're in your Starter Content folder, Maps folder right there, and we're going to right-click on it and delete. It takes longer to delete Map folders. I don't know why, but it, it just takes longer. It's going to go to that, and that's going to allow you to delete it because doing it once wasn't good enough. So now, I don't need my architecture. I'm going to leave the audio folder in there. I don't need the blueprints. Mm. Let's leave the blueprints. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the architecture because I don't need it. We're going to use some of the other stuff. Textures, let's see, shapes. Do we need shapes? No, we shouldn't need that one. Props, we'll probably use that because we have glass and we have rock and we have a bush and other stuff we can use. Particles, we're going to use. Materials, we're going to use. HDR, uh, the HDRI, no, nah, not going to use that. Yeah, well, it's tied up in the blueprint. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and delete the blueprints and HDRI because we're going to make our own stuff for our lights and stuff. Delete that. And 
force delete. And that should be good enough to clean up all these things here that we don't need. So that's going to clean up, because if you add starter content to your project, it's 700 megabytes worth of stuff that you don't necessarily need. Audio is going to allow us to have sound cues. The ones we're going to use, we're going to move, we're going to delete the rest. So collapse, explosion, we're going to add some of our custom sounds also. Starter music, we can use that as well. Steam, start a background cue. We can use all these different sounds and we can use these different. I don't need the shapes. Um, <coughs> so we need textures, props, particles, materials, and audio. It's all we need out of the starter content. And as we can, we're going to move them into our assets folder. Or we can leave them here. It doesn't really matter all that much. But audio is going to give us some sound files and one piece of music. And since this hasn't been a full hour yet, I'll go ahead and add in um, the starter music. And you get starter music Q. What's the difference? The music is actually the, the wave file. The Q is going to allow you to assign things like uh, effects. In this case, there isn't any. But I'm going to grab that and set it. It's already set to looping. Look in here, and that's all good. And eh, we're good. Volume multiplier, let's put that back to 1. And save that. And if I do starter music cue now, it's going to be full volume. So let's look at our main menu map. I want there to be music in my main menu map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Blueprints, Open Level Blueprint. Now inside here is going to be on the Event Begin Play, Destroy Session. Leave that alone. That's a necessary thing that has to be there for the multiplayer to work correctly. If you get rid of that, you're going to break shit. So um, after Destroy Session, I'm just going to go from this link right here. We're going to play sound at location. And we're going to use that music cue. Starter music cue. Now, we're going to have our volume multipliers right here. We can adjust that one from here. So I'm going to hit compile and save. And now, when we choose to hit play, from our main menu, we're going to have music just that easy. If it's too loud, you can hit stop and from right here you can select that and you don't have to worry about a location. It's going to play everywhere. You can go to your volume multiplier. It One is full volume. If you want to cut the sound in half, then it'd be 0.5. If you want 20% less, then 0.8. So, one is 100%. Point 0.1 is 10%. Just, you know, so you, you would adjust the volume multiplier. So that's all you need. And now you have sound in here. What about in your actual game map? What if you want some sound in here? In the audio folder, there is a starter background cue. And let's take a look at this one. You have uh, this one loops, and it's wind. You got birds, and you got another type of wind. You got some modulators going on here, and then you have a mixer. It's going to mix all three of these sounds together, go right directly to your output. And I'm going to leave the volume multiplier alone for right now. So let's actually go in here, and a couple ways we can do this. We can actually take the damn starter background cube and just drop it right into the map and be done with it. Or in this case, I'm going to um, do the same thing. Blueprints, open level blueprints. You don't need the event tick. And then event begin play. Play sound at location. We want this to be heard all over the map. 
So grab this and we're going to go to start our background queue and that should be good. We hit play now. You may or may not hear it right now, but it actually plays a little bit of wind noises and birds chirping. So you actually have something. It's more than just a quiet map. Since we don't have any explosions and gunfire and and stuff going on, we need something. We need a little bit of audio going on. Another thing you can do, just kind of say, okay, this is the bar. Whenever I go inside this building right here, I want it to be the bar. I want to hear music. So, for starting off with, we have our starter music cue, but we don't want to use that one. If we look at our starter music and hit play, no problem. I'm going to go ahead and right click on it, create cue, and I'm going to call this bar underscore tune underscore Q. We can change the actual song later, but another thing we need to do is go to our asshole fold I mean our assets folder. And what we didn't make in the other one is our audio folder. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Audio. And since for right now what I really need is attenuation folder. And I'm going to create a sounds sound attenuation bar att and default is 400 and 3600 um, we can close that let's go back to our audio bar tunes and attenuation settings needs to be well first off grab this and select looping because we want it to play continuous grab that and then we want to select actually right here bar attenuation save and close that now what I want to do is I want to drop this cue into the map now so let's put it roughly in the middle of the bar you can see that large circle? That's the attenuation ring. I'm actually going to put it in the doorway because the door is in the middle. So I can just do that. And let's put it at 1500. I think that's centered. Roughly. So now what I want to do is. If we look at it like this, you get this big, huge ring on the outside. So let's hit play and see what it looks like. Or sounds like. The closer you get to it, the louder it's going to be. It's not going to work for our porpoises. So let's go to our attenuation and let's change that to 1000. And save. And now let's look at it. The big ring is gone. Let's select on it. Okay, the big ring is still, you can hear it from the outside, but it's going to be strongest on the inside. Let's change that to 500 and 800. Take a look at it again. So we're good on the inside. We can still hear it on the outside. So let's actually tune this down to 600. Now, it's going to be a little bit smaller. So let's go over here and we don't hear it. We're outside the bar. We can start to hear it a little bit. We get inside, it's full volume. But we leave the bar, walk down the street, go to the other one, we don't hear the music. So that's how you use the sound attenuation to lock music into a certain area. You walk by the bar, you can hear it. Oh, there's music in here. You walk in, ah, oh, okay, that's the music, and then you can walk out and go away from it. 
and you can run into a cactus and, and harm yourself. And then you can get a first aid kit to heal yourself. And that's awesome. Okay. You guys have questions on this? Hit me up on Discord and we'll let you know. I'll respond back as soon as I possibly can. Um, yes, we will be doing combat later on. We wanted to get some of the, the, the background stuff done first. Um, we now have everything playable. We're going to save all. Save selected. And again, let's go ahead and... Since each video I have gone through and done a build version of, I'm going to delete everything in our initial folder. Go back in here and package project. We don't need to do this each time. Only reason why I'm doing it is I can show you what it's going to look like if you want to share this with your friends. You know, like every day or every couple days or every time you make a decent update, then you want to share it with your friends. Hey, look what I made. Or you can say, okay, well, give me some crit critique. What do I need to do next? Or whatever. You can share this with your friends and you can be proud of yourself saying, hey, this is I made this game. It's awesome with some of the coolest looking cactuses you've ever seen and awesome buildings that have shitty um, look to them. Hey, I like the way the cactus turned out. The buildings suck, but I like the cactus. <laughs> Alright, so we'll let it do its thing. It shouldn't take super long time. So you got some yellows and some greens going on there. No big deal, like I said. The only time you need to worry about anything is whenever it stops and says build failed. Then you need to go back and look through your build log and look for red stuff. But since I've already got mine up, I can actually close it and it won't kill anything. So I'm just going to wait for it to say, okay, it's complete. And then I can show output log if I need to. So... It, <laughs> I want to. I want to see what it's doing, because I I can look at it and know about how much longer it needs, or how much longer it's going to take. And one thing I didn't do was move that to map stuff or whatever, and a new folder here called um, pickups. I should have done that, but it won't matter. The next time I finish something and I do another build, it'll be good. I'm not going to save it just yet because I want it to go ahead and ask yeah, it. I'm going to show the output log. Okay, build successful anyway. So now I'm going to go ahead and save all, save selected. I'm going to close it. I'm done. And then I'm going to go into my folder, get everything out of that damn Windows No Editor folder, move it to the root folder, delete Windows No Editor folder, and there we go. And there was much rejoicing that we now have packaged our... Hey, look, we got music now. That's awesome. And later on, we'll do some dress-up on the menu. We can host a game... Clam, or calm, clam, dip, make, uh, howdy, partner, yeehaw, so, yeah, oh no, we just ran into a cactus and hurt her damn self, well, there was a first aid kit, okay, there it is, yeah, alright, so, that's it, let's go to the bar. And there was much rejoicing. The only thing that's really missing is our player can't dance. So I'm going to have to rectify that in the next video. But not tonight. It are a quarter after four in the morning, and I'm done for the evening. My Monday night um, one hour live stream turned into probably about five hours worth of streaming. But this is what we've created so far, and it's multiplayer. It's replicated. It works. Hold down the shift key, left shift to sprint. Space to jump. 
Let me turn the speeds back up a little bit. Cactuses hurt when you run into them. First aid kits heal. And then they vanish. And there's much rejoicing. Alright. That's not bad for a couple hours of piddling around. Um, for a multiplayer game that you can actually run around in and show your friends and say, Look, this is what I made. It are awesome and stuff. So. For those of you, like I said, who want to get the simple multiplayer Steam template, contact me on Discord. And... Um, I said my PayPal link is in the description of all my videos so you can go ahead and jump in there and go to PayPal send me 20 bucks US currency and then let me know in discord that you have sent the money I'll check my emails I don't check my emails very often anyway but um, let me know on discord hey I sent you um, the 20 bucks on on PayPal and I'll jump into PayPal I'll confirm it once I transfer it out and it's good to go then I will send you the um, the link to download from my Google Drive account the simple multiplayer template and a um, couple things we can do is also if you guys are interested in I can upload the daily build version of this game as it goes um, and I don't know it, it depends on if you've already gone through and purchased the simple multiplayer Steam template and you want these files, eh, once we get a little bit farther along, I might go ahead and package them, but it's going to be a much larger download than it would be if you actually did it yourself. Rather you did it yourself, but, you know, if not, then whatever. So, and I'm not going to release the core files to just anybody because it contains my simple multiplayer steam template so you know you're not going to get all of it for free so if you want a simple multiplayer steam template drop me 20 bucks let me know on discord you'd send it and i will get you a link in discord to download it from my google drive account i have started changing the url on that simple multiplayer steam template so that if you download it now it's no longer shareable after a couple days so once you pay for it download it and you're good to go oh no I'm wounded I need a full state kit there we go alright guys I want to thank everybody for watching and y'all take care main menu and exit game